Hi, I'm John. And I'm Lou, and this is CVE of the Week. Here we are again, folks. It's Friday, August 29th, and this is IT Sparkcast CVE of the Week, where we tell you about a common vulnerability and exposure entry that you need to know about and how to mitigate it ASAP. And this one's interesting. So we got uh, Cisco zombies for- that are being controlled by Russians. We're always- Oh, I hate Russian zombies. They drink all the vodka. So that's the guy who doesn't drink. But the thing is, we're always going to look for a lesson in this. And this has a very interesting lesson. It does. It does. So what's happening here is a a Russian linked espionage group that's got uh, tied to uh, the FSB's Center 16, which is also known as Static Tundra, Berserk Bear and Dragonfly. We got to love the names. Glorious. Is actively exploiting CVE 2018-0171. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Whoa, what? Oh, yeah. 2018? Yeah, it's a seven-year-old Cisco vulnerability. Yeah. <laughs> ah. So it's in the smart install feature in older Cisco network devices. Uh, and we're finding that a lot of these devices are unpatched and end of life, but still deployed. So one of the things that I've, you know, a lot of us know is some of that older Cisco gear are tanks and they just keep working. And they're, they're just, you know, they they'll just keep running and they're put into networks and they get forgot about, or there's no need to update that. It's just, it's in this legacy part of the network, but these vulnerabilities happen and they don't get updated code. They go end of life and then they're now vulnerable. So uh, what's happening here is the hackers are gathering configuration files that include credentials. And in some cases they're modifying these configurations to embed persistent access into the networks. And then they're using that to gain footholds and conduct extensive reconnaissance. And th- these targets span telecom, higher ed, manufacturing, and these operations are, are they, they go all over the globe. We've got North America, Asia, Africa, Europe, and actually, you know, Ukraine has been a big target. So we, you know, you would expect that that would be the case and in, in if it's, you know, Russian based. So, but uh, I mean, the thing is, I can tell you, having worked in, those three sectors, these are the folks that tend to take, if it's not the main line, I'm pumping 100 gigabits of video or something, they tend to ignore it. Manufacturing, in my experience, particularly a problem. Yeah. I have gone, I have gone into manufacturing facilities and found Catalyst 5000s with this much dust on them. Yeah. And they're like, well, we, we just don't want to touch it. I'm like, guys... You have to touch it. You have to update it. Sometimes you're going to have to swap it out. It's not like a robot that is moving your assembly line or bagging your Twinkie or whatever. It is something that can be used to hurt you. So you need to make sure you update these things. And I found similar with education, both with K through 12 and higher ed, you know, they either fall on one or other end of the spectrum. Either they're well-funded and you've got a top level IT director that's on top of it. And they're always got the most modern gear and they're really serving their constituents well, or they're low funded and an IT director that doesn't care or doesn't know enough about it. And maybe it's a secondary job for them. Uh, I actually walked into, I'll tell you what, it was actually the high school that my, my son's going to now uh, when we actually sold them their new network. Uh, as they were revamping, they had daisy chained random switches from all kinds of different vendors. It was an HPE switch plugged into a Linksys, plugged into a 3Com, daisy chained in the the drop ceiling, and they had no idea what was in there. Now they've since modernized and have a great network, and it's a good experience for them as they did a full build out of the school. But stuff like that happens, and so you could absolutely see why this would happen. Um, now, the reason we use the term zombies is that was the that was the term that was being used. And as we looked into this, this isn't really an accurate term because that suggests, you know, that that these are. But it's not like they're being used as bases for other attacks so much like we would consider a botnet to Correct. be. These are being aligned actively by an outside source to become potential backdoors in the event of a conflict. Right. So they're, so more accurately, they'd be more like controlled remotely uh, versus, say, you know, that zombie uh, 
analogy that was being used in the article that we read originally. But yeah. it, it is something that to be aware of. And again, it goes back to the, the things that we've been talking about in the past is patch early, patch often, make sure you're up to date, know what's on your network. Uh, and especially if you're if you're coming in new and fresh or if you've got a legacy network or you're acquiring companies, you know, and Lou and I've been there as well uh, to really get in there, probe through the network, understand exactly what's there, because this is the kind of thing that's going to get you get your name in the paper. It's going to get you called to the carpet. It's going to get you fired or whatever it is when these types of things start happening. And again, and. Some of the biggest attacks out there, whether it's ransomware or others, are those things that sit there and linger and wait. And they could be there for years before the attack actually happens. And that Actually, and there's one more thing I need to recommend. Okay. If you're new to a company or if you've acquired somebody, physically walk the building. 100%. Take a ladder, poke up the occasional overhead, see if there's blinking lights in there you don't recognize that look like they have network cables on them. I cannot emphasize how important this is. And we used to do this th a lot. That's exactly how we found all those switches at that school that I was talking about is they didn't know the network well. They they had network drops. They didn't know where they were plugged into. They didn't understand it. So we literally walked the school, hit, poked our heads up to the drop ceiling. And we then we found a 3Com switch. And then later on, we found a, 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 a Linksys switch. We found that they were plugged into each other. They weren't going back to a, a, you know an IDF or an MDF. And that was what we were going on there. So that's the kinds of things you're going to find. And that was a new IT director that was just coming in. And he didn't know yep. that type of stuff. So please don't feed the Russian hackers. Don't. They get very unruly. That's right. And uh, don't feed the hackers at all, please. And I think that's about it. That, that is. That is going to cover this episode. We couldn't do this podcast without listeners like you. We would love to hear what you think. Have you ever run into one of these situations? You come into a new company as one of our senior IT people and found a complete mess. Uh, have you maybe actually created one of these messes by, by setting up something and not patched it? We want to hear for, uh, from you. Send an email to feedback at itsparkcast.com or hit us up on X at itsparkcast. If you're on YouTube, you can leave a comment down below. We read every piece of feedback and every comment that we get. If if it's particularly insightful, we'll read it out on our broadcast so you can hear your name and your comment there. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. That way you never miss an episode. And with that, we're going to turn you back to your day for the world of enterprise IT and security. Take care. Go, go take a walk out there and have a look. Stay secure out there.